All right, folks, thanks for joining me. I had one of my viewers reach out and ask me if I could help with a loudspeaker. It's on a beautiful Zenith 12A57 stratosphere. An example of one of the receivers, and uh, here I am receiving the package. Again, it's a Zenith 12A57, and the loudspeaker itself is a Model 49-121 Alpha Bravo. Just sizing things up, you can see the seven prong speaker plug. Needs a, a cone, of course, a spider, the nice uh, bell housing there. Looks like a 400 ohm fill coil, but um, I'll expand on that more in a bit. It's actually 1400 ohms for this model. You can see the output transformer, push pull, 12 inch loudspeaker. As we were conversing back and forth, you can see an example of another loudspeaker, the spider and the mounting ring. That was uh, helpful for me. And here's some other photos again where I was asking questions. You can see the area to the left in blue. I think that was the two supporting fasteners for the spider bracket or ring itself. And a closer look at the center pole piece, much debris there in the gap, magnetic gap that will need to be cleaned out. The seven prong plug, you can see the frayed wires off to the left as well from the output transformer in addition to the uh, fill coil itself that will need to be uh, addressed. In addition, you can spot a lot of uh, rust discolorization so it looks like this uh, speaker at some point will is exposed to uh, moisture or a wet environment. And a closer look at that magnetic gap around the uh, center pole piece. You can see the iron itself, a little rust on it, and all the uh, trash and the debris that will need to be cleaned out around that area as well, just so we don't have a uh, rubbing voice coil when we get to that point at the loudspeaker a little closer the uh, one fastener there you can see where somebody had tried to remove it in the past um, I cannot find a socket that uh, fits the uh, nut looks like it's deformed where someone tried to remove it you can see the uh, scuff marks here's the strain relief I was talking about you can see the wires Looks like a few of them are frayed underneath that. And now looking at the conductors that uh, work their way back up to the fill coil, you can see the uh, black lead there has been spliced. And of course more sleeve placed over the uh, conductors going back over to the uh, seven prong plug. As you can see, the other lead going back over to the fill coil, that tan wire, extremely tight and pinched off inside the metal strain relief. So I expect to find an issue there that will have to be resolved as well. And not really what I expected to find, but pulling the sleeve off. You can see the wires are just twisted together. No solder has uh, been placed. Surprised the thing didn't uh, short out back over to the uh, basket itself or uh, conductor to conductor at some point. And of course, just making an as-built drawing, identifying the lead wires and the pins that they tie back to on the seven-prong plug for future reference and rewiring. And what should be the two field coil leads. We'll do some additional DC checks here in just a moment. Well, I'm not surprised. You can see we have an open, basically open fill coil reading 11.2 uh, K ohms. 
Again, referencing the schematic, we should be at around uh, 1,400 ohms of uh, DC resistance. So I'll need to look into that a little more. To remove the rivet from the bell housing to gain access to the fill coil and humbucking coil, I just used my spring tools uh, chisel. And you can see that allows access. You can see the uh, rust and corrosion there on the uh, fasteners itself and the choke itself around the uh, fill coil. I'll clean that up. Here's a better look to that bell housing was covering up the one on the 1400 ohm fill coil there that's stamped on the uh, speaker basket and uh, you can see the number itself that was used for the uh, fill coil. Just have those four fasteners to remove. I should be able to pull the uh, fill coil out and sitting just above the uh, fill coil, the humbucking coil, a few turns of wire out of phase with the voice coil. And you can see one of the end pieces that attaches to the bobbin there stayed attached to the uh, basket itself. No big deal, I've already uh, triple confirmed the uh, fill coil is open. And a better look at the fill coil, again, wrapped around that uh, center pole piece. And the end piece again of the bobbin that backs up against the uh, top plate. It serves as the magnetic uh, gap that the voice coil resides in. Just for my edification, you can see there's a humbucking coil and the uh, orientation. You can see this lead attaches here, goes back to the secondary of the output transformer here. The other lead of the humbucking coil goes here. And see if I can grab that back to the flex wire that attaches back to the loudspeaker voice coil. This marked a clear tie wrap red just for this one lead just for the orientation of the humbucking coil, no big deal. I'll do some tests in just a bit after we get everything back together to ensure that I have the uh, humbucking coil orientation correct. And a closer look at the original uh, fill coil. And I'll look at some of the rust removal that will be required before getting the new fill coil in place and things uh, remounted to the basket. And a great view of the part number for the fill coil, the OEM part, 125033. And you can see the winding kind of unraveling as I'm taking things apart. And taking some measurements so when I rebuild the former I don't have an issue. You can see I've got about six millimeters back to the top of the center pole piece. And just prying the humbucking coil off of the uh, yoke itself there. Probably some type of adhesive was used to hold that in place would be my guess. As you can see, a lot of rust removal will be required before rebuilding and getting the new fill coil and humbucking coil in place. Again, a close-up of the humbucking coil. Looks like Litz wire, again, anti-phase with the voice coil. What's left of the former on the center pole piece. Again, you can see some of the rust removal that will be required and the remains of the fill coil. And again, just using my spring tools chisel to uh, get rid of the rivets, the bracket that holds the output transformer in place back to the basket itself. A 
just snip the uh, secondary windings off and that should free up the uh, output transformer so I can get it off of the uh, basket itself. And again, more documentation, just looking at the thickness of that top plate, again, that magnetic area where we want the voice coil to reside. And I look back at the speaker basket itself after letting it soak in some citric acid and water for about uh, a day and a half or so just to remove the uh, rust. And then I just took a uh, 3M pad and went back over it. The nomenclature there, I'll try to reproduce that. And uh, you can see it cleaned up pretty well. I'm going to take this outside now and give it a nice wipe down with some mineral spirits and get ready to uh, prime and paint. Just taping out that top plate. You can see a little additional uh, tape out around the areas that are isolated for the uh, output transformer, humbucking coil, voice coil connections. And uh, flipping it over, you can see around that center pole piece as well, and of course on the inside of the basket as well, where the uh, lead wires will attach. Just a few light uh, misty coats, just around the uh, parameter itself of the uh, loudspeaker, and I'll come back and apply some additional uh, coats within a minute or two.